So I am experiencing a little bit of trepidation about getting a new house. And in order to calm my emotions and calm my fears, what I'm doing is drawing out what I would do with the property. And so far what I see is that I don't like that the house is gray. It's very colorless. It's well maintained, but it's super colorless. And I see that that um, uh, aesthetically that really bothers me. So I think the first thing I want to do is add big red pots, ceramic glazed pots to the front deck and then put in red poppies here and along the road leading up to the house so that it feels like you have a pop of color. There's already trees here and this fence does not exist yet but th this is where I would put geese <clears throat> because uh, I don't own a lawnmower in this area yet. Without being able to graze something here, I'm going to have to do a lot of lawn mowing. Th these are huge pieces of land. They, they don't look very big, but they're really, really big. This is the horse pasture, and this is the fence that already exists. So yes, I would want to put geese in here. And then on this side, I'm thinking goats, but because... Oh my, a mother morning and a very frustrated child who did not <laughs> move her pile of dirt so that's pretty much what I'm thinking the barn is here the only big tree on the property is right here and it looks like a crab apple to me eventually I believe that painting this house red would make the whole property pop a <clears throat> pardon me a lot of the other properties that we saw in the area that we were drawn to had red paint and uh, so the sun does not actually rise from this direction, but I was once again trying to pull some color into the landscape and see if I felt like I could make it homey. This should actually be a setting sun. Um, these are some of the existing fences and then these trees are on the other side of the property. And this is a big shed that is on the property next to us that might uh, be up for, for sale for us later. But at this point they have told us we could lease everything on this side. There's another five acres on this side that they're willing to let us at least use. And this is how I deal with the stress of whatever's going on in life, uh, feeling like I can't fix things. So instead I dream about them and it costs nothing to draw a picture. These are all pictures. This is from Idaho. This is what I would do with the tiny cabin in Idaho if I was there for very long this year. I would finish up the pallet greenhouse. I would put in a living fence along this side to give a little bit of prop of privacy. The chicken house is already here and I would put in more nanking cherries. Well, I already have nanking cherries in here. I would just make sure they stayed watered. The and I would I would plant some hollyhocks and some foxgloves here on the side of the tiny cabin. This uh, we built it as the off-grid shower, but I prefer to have a shower here on the porch with curtains up and plastic up rather than being out here because in Idaho even in the summer it's hot it's uh, not hot <laughs> it's cold at night so it's really hard at 50 degrees to go out and shower outside even though the water's really warm so that's there this is the barn back in Idaho and I'm just looking at it and seeing if we moved back to Idaho would we how would we fence it so the horses had a side and the goats had a side of the barn and then if we did that, the hay would have to be out. Usually we store the hay in here, but if we did that, we the hay would be ha under tarps. And then this is the woodshed that's already there. And then I'm also scheming about how to build hutches for the rabbits there in Idaho underneath the trees. This is the pallet fence we use because we have very curved little hilly land with lots of rocks in it back in Idaho. And so that's a pallet fence. And this is right next to the little cabin. And so I'm trying to find a shady place to put rabbits. I would use T-posts and then build a frame using U-bolts. I have done this before and it worked really well. And then just tin on the outside that's attached to the two by fours. So this is uh, my solace when I can't start any work is to, um, is to just art the crap out of it. This is the front of the cabin back in Idaho. And I would, I, this, it's amazing how much you can really do with this much space. And so I'm always, it's always at war as far as what it is I want to use it for at any given season. And that is a conundrum. These are hollyhocks, even though they don't look like hollyhocks. And then 
this would be, let's see, am I missing, I think I'm missing, I'm missing a piece of art. Darn it. I wanted to show you the top. Um, maybe it's here. Oh, here it is. Okay, this is what I did at church yesterday while I was listening. So they're at the top, so this is the house up on the hill and the driveway. And up behind the house, there's this lovely little um, roundabout. I'm trying to talk over my fighting children. Is it working? Here's my roundabout. And um, here I'm showing all the garden beds inside the roundabout because this is a huge amount of usable space. And if you have things planted here, it keeps people from encroaching further into the property and trying to make the road wider. It just keeps people from abusing your property if you put plantings in is what I found at our last property. So there's the road, it goes up and around. And then what this is here is this is the sideways view of it is that I would have these little swales to catch water and hold water. And then this hump would be here on the side of the road so that that extra water wasn't running into the road, it was holding it. And then what I would plant here is bamboo. You can grow bamboo here and it gets quite large. And then next to it, I would put blackberries. I don't know if you can grow sugar cane here, but if you can, I would put sh uh, blackberries or sugar cane here as the second layer. And what this is, is two layers of plants that winds all the way up around and creates a wind barrier for the garden, also a deer deterrent. Now, a, a really tall fence works really well too, but a lot of times if you plant something for deer to nibble on outside your garden, they'll come up to this kind of visual buffer and they'll nibble here and not do as much damage on the inside. Because we did have deer back home and our neighbor fed them apples and hay in the winter and we never had any trouble with them eating any of our fruit trees because there was um, deterrent. The other thing was in our um, swale system back home, I planted willows because willows was what would grow. I planted willows around the garden space and um, again it just gave them something to nibble on on the outside and they didn't bother to come all the way around to go in so that's kind of what I'm thinking the other option was instead of putting a garden there instead to put in trees like maybe some oak trees they're not I don't believe those are real fast growing but um, put in some kind of tree that would leave us enough trees to put to hang hammocks so that we would have big trees only in this space, not have them quite so close to the house and um, have that. So as you can see, I do a lot of thinking with my hands. And it just makes my stress come down because instead of going out and purchasing things, instead I can think through it and diagram it and um, just, you know, it's therapy for me. So there we go. Hopefully you enjoy that little, this is literally what it looks like. I do have the video coming up. I will have it up as soon as I can, probably on Saturday. We have been out to the house four times and um, if we do end up getting it, I am absolutely terrified <laughs> of the cost of restarting a homestead. It can be very expensive if you don't do it the right way. And my knee jerk reaction is that I want it all done right now. And that's very hard to resist at times. The other thing is we will not have a vehicle out there. We only have one vehicle. So everything that I need, I have to be able to get on weekends or I have to harvest from the land itself. So it would be a good challenge. And I do feel like every time I turn around, there's something else that I didn't know about Oklahoma, even though this is our third year here, which just cracks me up. So hopefully you enjoy that. Make sure to go check out our Etsy store if you're interested in homesteading supplies. And um, I do have eBooks over there about homesteading and fun woolworking tools and off-grid kitchen supplies. So make sure to go check that out. And I hope you have a fun time diagramming your own garden. Talk to you later.